What's up, YouTube? Today, I want to talk about creating a Cartesian sequencer in Bitwig's grid. So what is a Cartesian sequencer? Imagine being able to map different notes to different positions on an XY grid, and then being able to move the player head around the XY grid and generate different notes. That's essentially what a Cartesian sequencer is. So this is the precursor to a little bit more of a complex video which will probably be coming out next week. But the reason I split them up is because this one can still stand on its own as its own sequencer, note generator type of thing. So the Cartesian sequencer derives its name from Rene Descartes, which is essentially the brain behind analytical geometry, essentially anything that deals with mapping uh, points on an XY coordinates grid. He's also known for various other philosophical and historical stuff. In mathematics, pretty much everything to do with calculus and analytical geometry is derived from his work. So anyway, without blabbering too much, let's dive into Bitwig's grid and create our own Cartesian sequencer. So I'm going to be doing this in NoteGrid so that we can generate MIDI patterns and send that to any device that we want, whether it's Vital, Phaseplant, or even just a native Bitwig device. So let's add an instance of the NoteGrid. So within the NoteGrid, we have an XY generator. What this does is it basically takes the points of this uh, XY readout over here and just sends these out as two separate values over here. So one thing with the note grid is when we're dealing with this kind of sequencer based stuff, we're going to want to turn this voices to mono. Otherwise, nothing happens in the grid unless it receives note data, which is not essentially what we want, uh, is, which is not the behavior that we actually want. So once we've done that, we can actually jump into the XY and have a look at our value readouts. And we'll notice that if we turn this up, the blue output goes from zero to one and the red output goes from zero to one on the X coordinates. So X is basically from left to right, Y is from bottom to top. So if we, for example, take a bunch of, let's say value parameters and just arrange them in a grid like this of four by four, so 16 values, what we wanna do is we wanna create a system which can essentially choose which one of these values is gonna to send to the output depending on where this cursor is, which quadrant this cursor is in the XY. So it's actually a pretty simple system that we need to build here. And instead of these values, I actually wanna use a pitch because it's just gonna be a little bit easier to fine tune because we're gonna be dealing with uh, actual pitch data with a sequencer, let's use pitch. So as we're uh, dialing it in here, I'm just gonna put in some notes just so that we can duplicate these like from these notes, you know? Uh, let's make some nice variations here. So now what we wanna do is we wanna create a system which can mix between these values depending on where this cursor is. So over here, let's add a merge. And then with this, what we wanna do is we wanna set this to four inputs and we wanna set this to nearest and not linear. I'll explain why in a moment, but just for the sake of this quick explanation, let's put in a oscilloscope. Let's read the output from this merge. And what I wanna do is I wanna just take these four outputs from these first row of pitches and let's send this X parameter to the selector of the merge. So here, if we modulate this, I'm gonna put this here so we can see what's happening. If we modulate this, notice how we get the smooth curve of the notes, which is not what we want because it's not gonna to snap to that particular pitch. It's gonna kind of float in between the pitches. 
But if we set this to nearest, it's not going to interpolate those values. It's just going to step to whatever that pitch is. So this is the behavior that we want from the merge. Is this uh, nearest and not linear? Okay. Notice here, this changes with the left to right movement and not the down to up, which is not what we want. We want this to be from the Y output, which is the blue one. So now if we move this up, it cycles these values. Do you see that? However, it's backwards. So what we can do to fix this is we could use the phase reverse, which basically just inverts the value. And then notice how it goes from bottom to top. There's a little bit of an issue with this though, is at zero, it folds back to the start point, which is not what we want. So let's use a value scalar over here. And if we put this value scalar before the reverse, what we want to do is we want to scale these values from just above 0%. So notice here, if we just hold shift and move this to like 0.2 or 0.1 even, now it's starting at this position. And as we modulate it, it moves upwards. So essentially, now these pitches are being selected by these rows over here. So what we can do is we can now copy this. And now it's basically kept this system intact. But we want to route the second row of pitches to the next merge, and so on and so forth. So now what we can do is we can copy both of these. So now we have these rows to do. Okay, so now what I want to do is let's take a readout over here. Let's set this to semitone so we can read the pitch. And now let's see what's happening here. Notice how it's changing the pitch dependent on these, but it doesn't actually change with the Y parameter, only the X. How do we now switch between the vertical columns? This is easy. We actually just use another merge. So here what we can do is we can copy this. We don't want to take any of this, these inputs, right? And we don't want to take this Y input either. What we want to do is we want to take this X over here and plug this into this merge. And then from these four merges, we're going to plug into each descending input of the last merge here. And then this output goes to this value readout. So now let's see what happens when we move this around over here. Does it match these pitches? B3, B sharp four, B3. So now it's exactly matching these pictures that we've created in the note plane. So that's basically it. That's the brains of the operation. Now what we want to do is we want to send this to the output. But what I want to do is I want to add a module called the add because what's this is going to do is it's going to take the pitch input. So for example, the MIDI note, and it's going to add the sequence on top of that essentially transposing the note to the sequence. So for example, if we punch in a C minor scale over here, and then we trigger the sequencer with a G note, it's going to create a G minor scale. And then here, what we can do is let's just create uh, probabilities, which is going to trigger this input over here. Let's just create 16 steps just so we can test this real quick. <laughs> Instead of having to actually play this with the mouse, we can automate this in various interesting ways. So how we do that is using the modulator over here. What I want to do is just quickly create two of them, one that's linked to the inspector value over here for the X, the other to the inspector value of the Y. <clears throat> so now, if for example, we just take LFOs and plug these in here, it's going to start moving this value automatically for us. So this is a pretty cool way of getting this like nice visual approach. 
And also we can just kind of use these LFOs to create these kind of bouncy ball patterns and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, like I said, it's like it's these interesting ways of creating melodies that are kind of more visual and based on, I guess, geometry as opposed to music theory and that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's really cool just as it's like basic kind of, uh, as just a basic sequencer. But let me show you a really sick thing that you can do with this. So what I want to do is just save this as uh, Artesian Basic 2, because this is actually the second time I'm filming this video. I made a mistake <laughs> in the first one. Anyway, I'm sure you're aware, if you've seen this, uh, a previous video where I spoke about this, about this thing called voice stacking. So what this does is this basically allows us to create up to five different voices within the sequencer. Each of them can have independent modulation of this X, Y and these probabilities. So basically what I'm saying is that we could have one voice which is doing the kind of side to side bouncy pattern and another voice doing the up and down bouncy pattern. Then another voice doing kind of more of a sine wave kind of pattern. So check this out. If we add, okay, so in the inspector of the instrument, we actually have to select voice stack five over here. And so then if we add this voice stack modulator, this allows us to change any parameter here, right? And now these parameters, it's, it's a bit wonky here with the readout because it's kind of, uh, I think it's summing all of the voices together, but look at what's happening here with these merges. There's kind of always something happening here. So we can get these really interesting patterns here. So what I also want to do is I want to kind of sparse out the trigger of the voices a little bit. So here we can do a similar thing where we have a merge and let's say for example, just like quite sparse these voices here, do some stuff like this over here and then let's create a value over here and then let's modulate this value with the voice stack. So now what's going to happen is it's going to spread these probabilities across the five voices. So sometimes it's gonna trigger one voice, sometimes it's gonna trigger another voice. Thank you. 
and I want to do the same thing, but with octaves. So what we can do is we can just copy this, right? I just want to take all of these inputs out. And I just want to move this whole system up because it's getting a little bit messy. I want to keep this. And so here, let's say we want to set this to nearest because we're dealing with the pitch. And let's send this like this. Now what we can do is we can have various different octave amounts going in here. Plus one, plus two, plus one, and then the root again. And so now what we need to do is we just need to plug these in here. That's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm going to be uploading these presets to my Patreon for all my $5 supporters. So if you want to know what that's all about, check out the link in the description. And yeah, stay tuned for the next episode where we create uh, a pretty legendary Eurorack module. I'm not going to give it away though in uh, the Twigs grid. So anyway, stay tuned for that. I'll see you guys next time. One last thing. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.